In the previous module, we looked at the main features of turbine construction and the essential support systems. Now it's time for us to turn our attention to steam turbine operation and control. And we'll begin by looking at the means of adjusting the turbine's speed or turbine output. The principle of turbine control is very simple. If we need to increase the power output of the turbine, we have to pass more steam through the turbine. Conversely, in order to decrease power output, it is necessary to decrease the amount of steam admitted to the turbine. Turbine steam flow is controlled by adjusting the turbine admission valves, or control valves as they are often called. In the most simple arrangement shown here, we have one control valve, which depending on its setting, allows more or less steam to flow into the turbine from the steam chest. When the turbine stop valve is open, the steam chest is charged with steam directly from the boiler. In most turbines, multiple control valves are used as shown here. In this particular arrangement, the steam chest is located above the high pressure end of the turbine shell. We can see here eight valves, and these are opened in sequence according to the position of the cross arm, which is itself adjusted by the hydraulic control system. These control valves are set in such a manner that only one valve at a time is actually throttling steam, while the others are either fully open or closed, depending on the actual load. The result is that the throttling losses are smaller than in the case where only one large control valve is used. In large machines, say greater than 100 megawatts, it is more common to have two steam chests, one above and one below the shell, or located one on either side of the turbine. In this case, multiple control valves are located in each steam chest, with steam lines connecting to the turbine shell at the high pressure end. In most arrangements of this type, a stop valve is fitted at the entrance to each steam chest. During normal operation, the stop valve remains in the wide open position, while the control valves are modulated to adjust steam flow. The actual opening of the control valves is determined by the position of the operating lever, and this in turn is adjusted by the power cylinder of the hydraulic control gear. This schematic shows us a simplified version of a hydraulic control scheme. In this particular arrangement, a mechanical governor is used to sense turbine speed. Other types of governors are also used, as we'll see in a moment. In this configuration, a change of turbine speed causes the centrifugal weights to move. For example, a decrease in speed causes the centrifugal weights to move inwards and lower the pilot valve. This, in turn, allows more high-pressure oil to enter the power cylinder and raise the piston against the compression spring. This movement of the power piston opens the steam control valve and allows more steam to enter the turbine, which causes its speed to increase. Also note, as the power piston rises, the reset lever lifts the pilot valve back into the neutral position again. On large turbines with multiple control valves, a considerable amount of power is required from the power cylinder. In this case, it's usual to employ a double relay type of pilot valve. In this arrangement, we have high pressure oil above and below the piston. Now, when the position of the governor spindle changes, say for an increase in speed, the pilot valve lifts and allows high pressure oil to flow into the space above the the power piston. At the same time, the pilot valve exposes the space below the piston to the oil drain and returns the oil to the tank. The high pressure oil above the piston pushes it downward and consequently moves the control valve in the closed direction. At the same time, it also moved the reset lever to bring the pilot valve back to neutral position so it prevented further movement of the control valve. Now let's take a closer look at the governor itself. This mechanical type centrifugal governor is driven directly from the turbine shaft through a gear drive. As speed increases, the weights fly outward due to centrifugal force 
and lift the sleeve against the compression spring. The sleeve itself is connected to the pilot relay, which in turn adjusts the control valve through the hydraulic servo mechanism. We can adjust the set point of the governor by adjusting the compression on the spring. The adjusting nut moves up or down according to rotation of the screw thread. This action can be performed manually at the turbine or as is more usual from a remote position by operation of a small motor drive known as the speeder gear. This name derives from the fact that when the turbine generator is not synchronized to the power system, any adjustment of the governor's set point will indeed alter the speed of the turbine. However, when the turbine is on load and the generator is synchronized to other machines, any adjustment of the speeder gear produces an imperceptible change in generator speed. Instead, this action causes a change in steam flow through the turbine with the consequent change in generator output. We'll be talking more about characteristics of the governor and its effect on the electric power system in the next module. Another type of governor used on many machines is the 